Hi everyone, this is Brad Cummings from Board Game Geek TV. Um, I'm here with Kate and John from GoCo. Uh, and we're going to talk a little bit about uh, your upcoming games. So I know you're showing off um, Catan here at the show. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure, we're showing off an early version of a multiplayer version of Catan that we're really testing out to see what are the features that people care most about in a digital multiplayer Catan game. Um, the version that we've got here has a lot of exploring and discovery. Um, we're actually though taking a step back from the version that we've got there and looking at uh, building over the next couple of months a version of Catan that's really focused much more on asynchronous turn-based gameplay. We think that's the core of the Catan brand, what makes it so exciting for users over the last 20 years, and we want to make sure we're, we're being true to those values with the game that we put out next year. Great, and how does this relate to the current Catan digital games that are out there? Sure. So this is actually a, a, an MMO, lots of islands, etc. But it has several interesting components that we're going to be bringing forward with us, which are all about you know tech tree and you know interesting concepts you know layered into Catan. Um, and so I think the the interesting differentiation for us is both you know true multiplayer uh, going all across different platforms, bringing in additional content like we've done here. And we had a very interesting. Uh, um, beta period of about six months where we got lots of very good feedback about what, what people liked or didn't like. And so we said, you know what, um, we're going to take those elements forward that people liked and the, the things that we think don't work that well, where we're going to reformulate. And so um, so we think it's going to be a really nice addition to the Catan universe. Um, but you know, the differentiation here is mostly around true multiplayer, asynchronous play, a couple of other things like that. It's going to be nice. Great. Um, so I know you guys launched last year um, with Dominion. Uh, in beta, and I know um, there's a lot of feedback from various communities. Um, what have you learned in the last year about uh, the board gaming community and how to best serve so them? Probably that. Yes. You want me to take it? Yeah. I will take it. Yeah, so, sure, um, sure. you know, when we originally launched, um, we had a vision of being a platform for uh, all sorts of gaming. And we had built up, you know, as we as we all remember from last year, you know, we had built up a lot of marketing. We had uh, kind of held back on announcing anything before we launched to maximize the the marketing. And you know, to be honest, we usually a lot of us who are in the company usually work um, incrementally and more with the communities. And so after the launch, and we had to kind of pull back in and, and uh, fix some things on the servers. When we came back out, I think we were working a lot more openly. Um, with everybody, and you know, there were people that were you know, feedback is, I think, a very polite word for some of the some of the things that that uh, were hurled our way. But I think um, you know, our lessons were we just want to engage more with the community, which I think we're doing. Um, you know, we want to be more open about you know some of our plans, um, and and actually more incrementally introduce games uh, and and you know advance the versions that we have through feedback from the community. Great, and, yeah, and I think well, I think the other point is. We have pivoted as a company from our core strategy, originally was being an HTML5 game platform, and so our core customers with the original strategy of GoCo were actually game developers. That's right. Now, the value of an HTML5 platform is not the core of what we're doing. The core of what we're doing is building great games, building great versions of Dominion, building great version of Catan. And in particular, we think if we can innovate the feature set that makes these games more social, that brings some of those values that have made these games great over decades of people playing them around tabletops together, brings those values in, into the digital environment, we'll have done a good job. Great, and with Dominion, I know um, it was reported that you're not necessarily going away from HTML5, but um, making it packaging it in a way that's going to work well on tablets. Could we talk a little bit about that and maybe take a look sure. at that as well? Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll actually show you. Um, sure. I think one of the most important things is we we actually we have a very good version of Dominion that's working in HTML5, formulated for PCs currently. And that same code base enables us to move very nimbly to other platforms. However, we do need to address the core issues that HTML5 is deficient on for handsets and tablets. I'll let John talk about those issues there. 
So, um, as Kate said, this is, uh, and actually we're showing it off to you right now, the, um, the uh, code base for iOS is what you're seeing, and we actually can take that, as Kate said very nimbly, over to um, iOS, Android, Windows. Um, for us, it's a matter of getting through the iOS process and the App Store, which we're actually working on right now. Um, this is actually available on the Windows 8 Store, um, that version, and it's the same code base. Um, and then we'll be doing Android after that. I know Android users, we've had a lot of Android users stop by the booth and say, why not first? And we're like, well, we have to concentrate, so we're going to do it on iOS first. The, the, some of the core usability issues, though, that we addressed with buttressing the HTML5 technology was to enable these games to be distributed in the iOS and Google stores. Yeah. We all know that discovery is the biggest challenge, and if we're using the, the primary channels for distributing these, that's the most important. Mm -hmm. And then also, we have enabled these games to be played in an offline mode. And I think that's probably the, after not connecting with the processor well, so presenting graphics very well, that's the second biggest deficiency of HTML5, is not enabling offline gameplay. And as, I, as we all know, the on-the-go nature of gameplay that you have on handsets and tablets means you absolutely need to have very good service uh, offline and we've really addressed that with this new version. Great, yeah, because I know um, from talking to different developers that a high percentage of games that are played are actually played against AI mm -hmm. on a lot of these handheld board games um, or mobile board, ga board games, so it's great to see that addressed. Um, sorry, I'm blanking here. Oh. No problem. And actually our AIs, you know, as most people know, we have a variety of AIs. Um, we've, they've been improving over time. Uh, so, you know, we've, we've, uh, the community has given us lots of feedback on what's working and what's not working. And we, we generally jump in there as quick as we can to fix any issues that come up. So we actually think Dominion and all the expansions are pretty, pretty darn solid at this point. You know, we're going to have some small issues here and there, but we think it's pretty solid. And so as we go to the tablets with the standalone version, the nice thing is that this has been proven out. You know, you, you know you're going to get a solid version on the tablets for standalone because it's been through a lot with uh, online. And um, you know the interesting thing also about the version that um, we have showing here at the show is Intel actually asked us to do a, uh, a family version. It's a table what we call a tabletop mode, which has four hands all around the edge of a device. They're they're bringing into market a new um, uh, PC which is meant to lay flat on a table and have a family gather around it. Um, and so what we've done is um, created a version of Dominion that has the card set, you know, your hands all around the edges. And actually, they're face up, which is a design change, because what we found is that for families, most of the time you get parents advising children. Right. And so that way they can, you know, it's a more open style. So, but actually people have been quite, um, you know, we are showing that also here in the um, Mayfair area, but also in the Rio Grande booth. And actually it's been really crowded. People have really enjoyed it. They come over, they like touching the screen. They like moving things around. They like not having to clean up the cards. They like not having to, you know, so, sort everything after you're done. So, um, yeah, they're having a lot of fun with it. Right. Yeah, and I just have to say, I think the AI actually is really good based on, you know, how many permutations you're dealing with yeah. all, the, all the cards and all the possible combinations. Um, I'm just curious, there was a lot of uh, feedback, I guess that word again, um, or whining about uh, the price point uh, in terms of in-app purchases when the, when the game first was released. Is there going to be any changes to that or any? Uh... Not that we know of, and actually, um, to be honest, we don't get that much feedback about that anymore. Okay. To, to be honest, what, most of what we hear from people who say, um, well, I bought all the physical versions, I should get the online versions for free. Um, and, and to be honest, I'm sympathetic, I understand where they're coming from, however, um, as a business, we simply can't do that and they point to people like Days of Wonder and, I, and it's an interesting comparison because Days of Wonder uses it mostly as a marketing tool because they own both halves and actually their digital side mostly drives physical sales so we don't benefit from the physical sales so we actually have to but then I, I can also point out for uh, Hasbro and Magic Online that you actually are paying for the cards there even though you might own them physically and so there's you know there's there's examples both ways on this but we're an independent company from the publishers so so, you know, that's how we actually stay in business. Right, that makes sense. And I think one thing, though, to, to emphasize is, is that if you've purchased card packs online and then you sign in to the version that's distributed on the tablet, you get all of your purchase content. Okay. So we are enabling your profile and all of the content that you've purchased on whatever device you're accessing that's it right. on. Yeah. So you, you said you're in works with Apple right now. Does that mean we're going to be seeing it fairly soon? Yeah, we believe so. So, and we put a caveat on this only because we are not in control of the approval process. Um, but we think about mid-September. 
Great. That sounds so really awesome. That's not a promise. Okay. There's a probability in there, but it, it relies on us getting through the app approval process. Great. And I know a while back I got a beta invite for uh, Race, yeah. Race, Race for, for the Galaxy. Galaxy. right over there. Oh, cool. So you guys are still working on that as well? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can play it here. Oh, cool. And uh, what's the, the timeline on that? We still have to go through a beta on that, and uh, so generally we don't try and announce any, any dates for release until okay. we're through the beta. Um, we might discover some card bugs that really take a long time. We don't know yet. So. And in terms of uh, launch platforms, uh, the Dominion app is going to be only Dominion, or will it be a GoCo app that accesses all of the current, currently available games? We're really, uh, we're really focused on doing Dominion right, and it'll be our first game out. Um, I think absolutely, as we get other games that are really, really good and marketable, we will do cross-promotion. Okay. However, again, as our company has pivoted in the last six months to be much more focused on just building great games, right. we're spending a lot less time building a lot of the features of the of the network. However, I do, again, think there is obviously a great cross-promotional opportunity when we have great games. Great. And uh, Kate, I know you've done, you've been in the casual games yeah. market for a long time. Um, how has your experience there, like what, what are you taking from there that you're bringing to GoCo? Well, I think one of the reasons that I was so excited to have the opportunity to come into GoCo was because I think truly social games are turn-based games. And this conference here with all these people, they know what true social engagement is in gameplay. And I'm super excited to have the treasures of these game designs and the great fan bases to help us define what are going to be deeper than the next generation of deeper social games. Not a shallow social layer that feels like a gimmick to get money out of you, but really, what are games that enable you to engage in a meaningful way with your friends and family? Great. That sounds really cool. Um, I look forward to you know the, the new direction of the company, and we're really excited to see some great games yeah, come from we'll you guys. Yeah, we'll get you on the beta for, uh, for, for uh, Dominion in the next couple weeks. Oh, okay. Thank you yeah. so much. Yeah. Okay, great.